Is there some comments that make you feel uncomfortable? Mm. Thighs were too fat uh, and I need to lose weight in my hips. Oh, we would love to hire you, but you have to be 51 kg. Fuck, I'm plus size there. <laughs> <laughs> is that really diversity? Yeah. Is that, or is it just performative? You know, you yeah. just want to be able to show that you have a plus size model. Yeah. Do you guys find that like the work ethic of an influencer versus a model is different? Oh. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chuck It Out with Jane and Mandy. Today, we're going to talk about modeling. Let's chuck it out. We actually invited two real models, very famous in Malaysia. Wow! Well, <laughs> Cheng so. and Roanne over here. Famous. famous. Oh. 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 Do you hear that? So. Oh. Do you hear that? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> okay, so we have Cheng and Roanne over here. So Cheng runs like, uh, besides being a model, she also runs like a clothing oh, brand okay. called Ghost Boy. Very famous. Everyone, all the Gen Z know it. Available yeah. at mm. is at Diamond Barrel. Yeah, better, better. And Ghost Boy website. Yeah, ghostboy.com.my. Yeah, assistance only. <laughs> Ghostboy.club, bro. Oh, dot <laughs> Oops. Sorry, embarrassing. So, yes. we have Ryan here. So, Ryan, uh, I know she, besides Molly, she does a lot of creative work. Um, she's into like film. Are you still like doing film? Or like, you're still like, Yeah, I'm working? still doing film. I'm still writing here and there. And I'm hoping to direct more. But for now, I'm just chilling. <laughs> When you guys start modeling, it's like modeling part of your like career path. I started modeling when I was seventeen because my dad sent me to this like modeling course because he wanted oh. me to like learn about grooming. You know, he wanted me to learn how to like do my hair, walk with heels and stuff. And then he sent me for that. And then after that, I joined a competition, and then it, it slowly took off. Like, I don't think it's like a a huge sudden like whoa, you're like in a burst of fame, but like. Actually, the first time I saw you, you know where? When it was in Good Vibes. You read the pink, pink. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god, god this girl is like so cute. No, then she's like dancing out remember, there. No, then remember we were like, oh my god, this girl is actually not bad. Then we wanted to like, hey, maybe she can like, you know, do like chart mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I now I remember. Right? Yeah, then we were like, oh my god, this girl is so cool. I'm actually Chang's fangirl last time. You remember how we met? It was for uh the test shoot at. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Who's with uh, Husaini, Husaini and Easy yeah, yeah, at yeah. Yeah, the the train. I think how I got into modeling was a Kowinki thing. It was very coincidental because I started out as a photographer. You know, last time they have like this Insta meetup. They don't do it anymore, but they have like Insta meetup where like Instagram photographers come oh, together yeah, yeah. Oh. and then we just walk around KL oh, yeah, 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 shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. back then I was a photographer. So I just went there to like chill and vibe. And then all of a sudden, this photographer came up to me. Can I take your picture? And I'm like, me? <laughs> me? I was having like pimples. I was like wearing like grandma clothes with my little camera. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then he gave me a flower. And then Shout out to this photographer. <laughs> yeah. He's such a sweet guy. I don't know who he is. I don't know his name until today. But he gave me a flower and he's like, okay, just pose. Just be natural. And I'm like, okay. And then I just post around, pasa and then when I turn around, all of a sudden I see a swarm of photographers just taking my pictures, oh. and I'm like, I can't f this up now, so I'm just like posing with my little flower. So you, and now you didn't like do the whole photography thing, so yeah, you just became, yeah, you became like the model with the flower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so guys, I know you guys go through a lot of castings, so maybe just tell us like what was whole, true. Yeah, like just walk us through this whole casting process, how it goes. You get to the casting, you wait, you wait, you wait, and wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then as you come in, they'll take a bunch of photos, front photos, 45, 90 degrees, um, some expressions. So for TVCs, they always give you like the standard, give me a happy face, oh, yeah. and then sad, and then angry, and then surprise. And then <laughs> they'll probably give you like a prompt from like the project they're working mm -hmm. on, like a story, and then you just have to act it out. It's very awkward, but the key is to not make it awkward. Runway castings are just like you put on your heels and then you walk along the corridor and then he'll take a video of you. They'll give you pointers sometimes. Yeah. For Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week, because I was there for as a photographer, they do give like pointers like, oh, you have to like straighten up your shoulders and just like go instead of just like, Walk, come back, okay, you're done. Yeah, or walk, like, walk faster. Yeah. No, I've been to quite a few castings where they just give you like one shot to do it and then if you don't get it right, then it's like, doesn't yeah. matter. 
Is there some comments that make you feel uncomfortable? Mm. Sometimes producer or like casting directors, they would just like, you know, yeah. say out. Yeah, I used to get comments that I was too fleshy and <gasps> my thighs were too fat and, and that I need to lose weight in my hips. But what then you can't do happens? anything, you're just yeah. like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then why yeah, only you do too. stuff? La? That's yeah. the fun. La. And yeah. even if you try like, oh, I, I used to like, oh, Ting Lao, go work out and then I like, do spin class and then it got bigger and like, damn. So I should just like not do anything, not eat. I went to this casting once overseas and then I was really skinny. At least that's, that's what I thought, like to the bone skinny. And then they judged me based on how much I weighed. This was in Korea, la, so understandable. Everyone is skinny there. And then they're like, oh, we would love to hire you, but you have to be 51 kg. I'm plus size there. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and I was 55 already. I was like, for my body... Because you're very tall shape. and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> my bone is heavy. And I have like a lower, heavy lower. But it's like, it's unhealthy. A lot of insecurities are like, because it's like overseas also. And it's like a big agency. And I'm like, oh, am I not good enough? Like, there's a lot of insecurities that comes with it. Mm. But in the end, it's just, it's just how their market is, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. But whatever you do, don't starve yourself. What's the usually like the boundaries that you will set working with directors and also photographers? Because sometimes they, you know, they want to push the limit and you'll be like... Halfway ask you to strip, right? It's like, shit. But you chef has that happened to me before. Really? <gasps> really? Oh. Okay, spill it, spill it. But uh, wait, I, I don't think it's not like okay. um, sexual at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when it's for fashion, then I don't mind like implied nudity. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was doing the shoot for for the Chinese New Year campaign. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the shoot, he told me like, oh, that for this um, next looks, we're gonna have you like be in your underwear and then um, you'll wear like the, their top, their like chipao top, and then you'll have like an, an yeah. island, like say yeah. this pot, and then you'll cover your kuchi and then it'll look like you're not wearing any underwear because they'll edit the underwear out and then like you're just like holding the item. And then at first I was like, I wish I knew that earlier. <laughs> yeah. But but it's fine lah, cause you know it's it looks good and it's yeah. like more conceptual than it is just trying to be sexy. Mm -hmm. True. But I guess based on what you mentioned, it's like there are some moments that you know you wish that they tell you earlier. They tell you earlier. Yeah. 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 So, so you like can have... mentally prepare yeah. for it, yeah. physically prep for it. Yeah. Same. I had like a similar experience, but it was for a graduate shoot, and I loved that shoot so much. And the one thing that I love about that shoot is that they prep me uh, we're like okay. oh okay this bodysuit is going to be really revealing we're gonna give you a nude um panty but we're gonna edit it out just let me know that if you're uncomfortable or not just like little things just prepping your models mentally and letting them know that this is like a safe space i appreciate that a lot not just for modeling but for like film as well just like a brief mm. on like it's okay if you don't want to mm -hmm. and we can find we can always find an alternative way to make this work at the same yeah. time. Like for sure, you hire them to be like, oh, just one day shoot and then ciao. But the model is working for you. They want to make your stuff work too. So it's important to make them feel like they know what you're doing and make them to feel safe. So have you like done any job and then like you didn't get paid? When I was freelance, probably. Really? You forget about it or like, I legit, I forget about it. Oh but <laughs> there was this one campaign that I did and they didn't pay me for like two years, I think. A year and a half, maybe? A year and a half. And I had to chase. I had to threaten them, oh, I'm going to post you on social media. And then it was like, oh, money just came in. Mostly in late payments, uh, not not paying at all. Just super late payments. The longest you had was two years. Something like that, yeah. Okay. One month. That's it. Really? Yeah, for me, one month. Oh no, it's okay. I'm, I'm impressed. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It's okay, yeah. <laughs> I think we can touch base a bit about like the KL Fashion Week. Do you guys walk for KL Fashion Week? Never. Never. I walk for KL Fashion Week, but it's always um I'm hired by the designer and uh, not, not by KL yeah. Fashion Week. I've never been a part of the KL Fashion Week whole like, I not saw Alicia when she started doing like the whole movement. Okay. Yeah, yeah. From then on they started paying people on time. I think because Alicia was like campaigning for payment the ne the day after the show mm. yeah. so I think that that really helped her. it was really great what she did I met models before that said that they've just never gotten paid and mm. like they all the um, Kale Fashion always send like a few thousand 
and like they are just so tired of chasing it and then they just let it go yeah, yeah. and then sometimes like uh, Cal Fanshi we message them saying hey God, um, do you want to walk again for this week but you haven't paid me from two three years ago it's like what's the point of yeah, going yeah. just going to be working for free again yeah. I feel some people would actually walk for free because they want exposure and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. that's right. true what is like the advice that we would give the newcomers that want to be like a model and don't get Try taken not advantage yeah. of. Yeah. 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 Don't put a lot of expectation as well. It's not that glamorous. If you want to do it for the sake of like, yeah, I think this would be fun. I'm like, just just be prepared to not get anything from it. Then yeah, then yeah. go go for it, I guess. But then mm-hmm. don't do it too many times because you're just going to ruin the market. Yes. You're going to ruin your own reputation. People are going to continue to not pay you. Yeah. yeah. And then you just ruin it for everybody else who's trying to make a living out of this and they, they depend on... Um, the industry to actually earn money for a living. Speaking about everyone wants to be a model, I'm pretty sure everyone knows like on Instagram, there's a lot of like Insta models. I want to know what are your <laughs> thoughts on this. To be fair, we also scout a lot of people. Yeah. Mm. See, that's the thing. There's a lot yeah. of mixed feelings on that topic because one thing that I'm happy is that they're starting to open up. It touches on diversity yeah. and also inclusivity. So literally everyone can be a model, mm. which is a good thing. But like what Chang said just now, it's just a matter of whether you are setting that standard for that market and not ruining it. Mm. That's the problem right there, you know? Like you say, like Instagram models. Some they don't call themselves models, they're just influencers. Like brands who actually like, you know, hire influencers and then to put them on like screens or like you know in a business standpoint i understand because it does help with exposure and marketing like why do it's like two in one yeah like two in one like why do brands hire celebrities to be their ambassadors for exposure Mm. so i i I do understand so but at the same time i do have mixed feelings i don't know how to say this the model's main job is to be whatever the brand wants them to be Mm. Mm. So you can be any personality, you can be no personality, you can be... Basically, you're just catering to whatever they want. You're just molding in to fit whatever it is that is on the concept board. Mm. But influencers, they come in and they're offering their personality. Mm. They're offering their social media following. You know, they come in as a person who is not meant to be molded into... Like uh, the concept. Yeah, yeah. Like what you mentioned. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's what I feel is different. And... I don't think that it's necessarily bad that like people on Instagram want to become models and like do get jobs because that I feel like that's just a bit hateful and a bit mm-hmm. jealous like oh yeah. people get it easier than I did and it's totally it's it's not the same lah. I have a question. Yeah. Do you guys find that like the work ethic of an influencer versus a model is different? Oh. Like, Depending what kind of. Because <laughs> some people say like the the bigger you're following, the more diva you are kind of thing. Not really, right? I don't think so. It's like they choose to be diva. It's yeah. just that people treat them like, oh, yeah. if you have more followers, then oh, they treat you better. They call- yeah. yeah, it's not like, I don't think like it's an influencer. It's like for me, I have fat chill. It's yeah. like, like just whatever, you know, yeah. like, fun and everything. Oh, okay, well, you don't need to like yeah. specially order something for me. But like people would actually like, oh, actually think like, oh, you have more followers, then they treat you better. I don't know. Sometimes. My first ever time doing an influencer shoot and not a modeling shoot they set the call time for the shoot to be at like 7 p.m. I arrived there at like 6.30 and then it's like, oh, we're waiting for everybody to arrive. It'll probably be around 8.30. And then I was sitting there in the cafe waiting for like an hour and a half just for the other influencers to arrive at the time. It's like, why did you set the call time like at 7 if you meant to start the shoot at 8? And it's like, oh, we're yeah. just catering for people to come late. I'm like, whoa, that has never happened in modeling. Like if you're supposed to be there at 9, you need yeah. to be there at 9. Yeah. But there's definitely, like, based on my experience, there's definitely times where, oh, I hate to say this, but influencers are treated with much more patience and respect than models. There's this influencer with millions of followings, adored by everybody, came to the set late. The makeup artist straight up just pulled out her private chair for her and then she was just, like, sitting. She didn't even, like, say hi to the models. She just said, like, hi to the important people. Like the directors, her own makeup artist, and then she just came by and then did like a shoot less than an hour and then leave. And then she didn't even say hi or goodbye or anything. She just literally just come and go. And people are just like, 
are you okay? Like, do you need water? And I'm like, why don't you ask me? I've been here for nine hours wearing this wig. <laughs> so why not me? I don't think it's like a problem of being an influencer or not. It, it's a problem of being you as a person, like your attitude, mm-hmm. your personality, or how you treat not just, you know, the important people on set, but also around you. Because mm-hmm. everyone is working hard to yeah. make this shit happen. Yeah. People have been planning this for weeks, for days, even months for this day, for this shoot. So it's your job to be, you know, make this happen. And yeah. it's important to be kind and be nice, even though you don't know them. Because yeah. everyone is just trying, honestly. Yeah. They might yeah. not know what they're doing. Or like, I bet like everyone at one point be like, I just yeah. want to go home. Like, <laughs> everyone is just trying. So it's just important to be kind and be nice. Is there something like things that you wish it can be better in the modeling industry? Yeah. I think payment terms. Payment, payment. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> payment terms. We did 90 days. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, diversity. Mm. Not just, like, things are already, like, as diverse as it's ever been. But um, there's still little things that we can improve on. Mm-hmm. Like, agencies that want to cast girls, mm-hmm. uh, models. So they will be, like, oh, they'll cast, like, skinny girls. And then they'll cast plus-size girls. And then plus-size girls need to fit into a certain size as well. They also have the measurements that they need to hit. Which is, like, I understand, like, um, designers are making clothes in sample sizes. They can't make everything to fit every single model perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's this casting that I went to for an agency that um, had plus size girls in their roster, but they will still tell their already skinny girls that they need to lose more weight. Mm. You are one. catering to the market in the sense that, like, oh yeah, I'm offering this and I'm offering plus size girls too, but like, you and your own values, you still feel like you need to criticize your own models to lose weight, to be skinny. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I get what yeah. I mean. Is that really diversity? Yeah. Is that, or is it just performative? You know, you yeah. just want to be able to show that you have a plus size model yeah. on your roster, but in fact, you still force girls to starve or like, yeah. I don't know, like work out like crazy. It's always about like, you have to be skinnier and not like you have to be like, how do I say this? Like, yeah, okay. there's, there's yeah. no mid size model. There's, there's no, no mid size. Yeah, exactly. There's no mid size. And there's this issue about what's it called? Tokenism, where a pool of really good looking, stereotypical models, there's always like a few models, like one, two, three, that are like different, just so that they can like fit like the whole diversity. Like, you oh, say like yeah. that performative tokenism. And it happens a lot in Malaysia as well. Let's say if I start off as a model and then I don't know where where are all these casting from? Where do I get all this yeah. information? Is there like a, a site? Thing. Oh, is there like a, a place or do I a platform? try an agency? Yeah. Try agency. agency. Okay. Yeah. Last time oh. I used to start with a uh, Facebook group, just like random, um, not random lah. Like oh, you can follow casting. her route. Coming back to casting, do not pay for any of casting because I would I paid before. Huh? So for basically, what? I paid to be ah. Oh, so dull. So okay, it's experience phase. Thank you for sharing. So back then, I reached out to agency. I just sent all my pictures, and then one agency replied me. It was in KL and Moncara, and then I had to go for a casting, and my mom was with me, so I'm fine. Oh yeah, when you go for a first time casting, and you don't know anyone. Bring someone. bring someone with you. Yeah. yeah, especially if you are tiny. But anyways, I brought my mom to the casting, and then um took my casting photos and all that and then I had to pay 350 ringgit to be signed under this modeling agency and then so I did I was like oh okay maybe 300 ringgit I pay now but then the next job I get maybe I can earn like 1000 ringgit so the 300 ringgit doesn't matter anymore just like all this like did you ever get a job? no absolutely not and scam. if an agency <laughs> ever asks you to pay money to be under the agency Never. it's a scam it's a like scam. it's it's their investment in you. And they're yeah. supposed to earn money from jobs that you get. How can they be charging? Not once notice or anything. Like I said, my mom was with me. So while she was waiting at the waiting area, the casting director came to her and signed her. And then she had more jobs than me. Oh my god. Whereas I pay, I have no jobs at all. I mean, it's a good advice now. Just like, yeah. you know, if you Do get, your research. Yeah, do your research. Do your Ask. research. Modern course, because I know you've been to like modern course. Do you think like it helps? I think it helped me. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was good. You get to talk to people who are in the industry. I think it's more about like 
getting into it. yeah getting no getting the information you need to start more than mm. like like stuff like learning how to walk learning how to do your makeup it's all, everything you can learn online but talking to somebody who is in the industry in the country that you're in I think that's more valuable yeah. they provide yeah. guidance I've also been to a uh, modeling training for Mercedes Benz Fashion Week and they train us every single weekend for like catwalks and not just like how to walk just to get like more insight mm. on what's going on in Malaysia and overseas as well it's always good to have like someone guiding you and mm. learn more and other than that like these um, mentors they also give you on like a breakdown on like how do you groom yourself mm. how do you present yourself and what to say when a photographer is being creepy to you like oh I'm sorry I'm very uncomfortable please step away from me something like that little things that you know guides you throughout your entire yeah. but it can be a lot of money though so I wouldn't recommend it to everybody yeah. unless I mean, unless you feel like you need it or like mm-hmm. you are unless you're willing really, like, to invest about, like, yeah. 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 anything just yeah. YouTube like, yeah. 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 Try there are so many models well. who've gotten so far without training yeah, yeah. I understand like some fresh faces or people who are starting out have no idea what to do and like have no one to ask, especially about this industry. DM Ryan. Uh, DM Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, I'll tell you a Xiaohongshu. A good way to kind of know more information is to get as many information from the client or the brand that you're working as much as possible. Mm. Do not call. If you call, record the conversation. Have everything in black and white. So in case anything happens to you, this screenshot is your lifesaver. Mm. So yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you so much for sharing your insights in the modeling industry. To be honest, if you have any questions, maybe go DM them. <laughs> so we should reply a lot, but I mean, I'll tell you all. Sure. Thank you all so much. Thanks, guys. Yay. Bye.